So we are going to start because we have about 45 to 50 minutes with Miss Allison. Kyle says um, he's really excited to participate today. The ORCA drawing was was not, um, we didn't, it didn't happen. So we're, we've rebooked it. We're going to, I'm just answering his question. We've rebooked it and we'll let people know. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a really cool um, part of Egyptian culture, and that is the hieroglyphs and a cartouche. And before we started, I just wanted to let Miss Allison see mine, because this is something that I bought when I was in Egypt, and oh, it is my name, and I get to wear it um, so that I can remember my name, because sometimes I don't. But <laughs> about the um, Egyptian alphabet and how it what it means and maybe how it was discovered and how we can write our own names in hieroglyphs. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Miss Allison. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for letting me know for uh, for introducing and letting me know about that really cool necklace. I definitely want one like that. Um, hi everyone, I'm so excited to be seeing you all on this Friday afternoon. Hopefully you've been having a wonderful week of learning at home. I know every time I get to meet with Connected North, I leave so inspired and excited. So just so you guys know today, I'm gonna try my best to interact through the chat box feature. So I'm gonna be asking questions, having you look closely at objects and don't worry, we have a good amount of time for us to make sure that you can draw your own cartouche, okay? And we can do that together and maybe even um, I can play along here and I'll show you how it goes. But first, as you guys know, I always like to make sure there's a little bit of a presentation because my job at the museum makes sure that we study human history. So I always like to start with a little formula of where this is, where we're talking about, what this relates to, to the sets of behaviors that connect us to groups of people, right? Their culture. So I'm gonna share screen if that's okay. I set this up so that it should be easy. Um, Miss, uh, can you guys give me in the chat box, can you let me know if you guys can see everything? Oh, right. It's okay if you don't want to draw. Don't worry. It's not all drawing. I totally know how that works. <laughs> so um, what you guys see on this screen is just one example of the cartouche that we have here at the Penn Museum. That's kind of a big name and we'll jump into what that means. The one thing I always love to say is that the work that what I put into your workshop is all of this presentation all relates to objects you can actually see in the Penn Museum. So I will definitely be talking to you a lot about what we have at our museum. And I am going to ask everybody, it's okay if you don't have it now, but in a little bit, just like you heard at the beginning of our lesson, we actually are going to have pe paper and pencil that are going to be uh, what we're gonna be using for a little bit of a making ac activity. Now, if anyone is meeting me for the first time, my name is Miss Allison and I work at the uh, University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. That is like the hugest name ever, right? So we actually call ourselves the Penn Museum for short. And what we do, we have one job, guys. The one job we have is to study human history. What that means is we use archaeology to jump thousands of years into the past, okay? We have real life archaeologists that have been digging, excavating, like big, huge digs almost on every single continent. And we've been doing this for over 100 years. Now, when we dig into the earth, what we find is ancient cities. And those ancient cities, they help us learn about people and their everyday lives, okay? Now, what we're going to practice on today is acting like these archaeologists, all right? I am here to have you guys start thinking like archaeologists, because guess what? The main tool that we use in archaeology, as you can see right here in this picture, my cursor is going over, is we use our eyes. And then we use the background knowledge we gather through going to school to put together all of this information to help us understand the purpose of those objects and how that object related to the bigger understanding of people's lives. 
So we have actually objects from all over the globe. But since you got, I heard that you got, oh, and I see that in our chat box, we have people that uh, have neighbors that are archaeologists. So that's really cool. Maybe they've even met some of the archaeologists that I get to work with. And I'm really excited because we're going to look at objects. You can look at objects from all over the world, but we're going to take a really close look at one type of object in our collection and it relates to the area of the world that we refer to as Egypt but the name of this object is called cartouche so everyone take a minute where you are and I want you to say cartouche all right uh, we're working on a trust system, so I hope that you all did that. All right. Now, the cartouches, as you can see, my friends here are looking closely, are these types of objects that actually really just represent a name of an ancient individual. And this name is really, really special. But first, let's make sure we all remember where, um, where Egypt is. So if you guys are paying attention, I just gave this away. But who wants to tell me what continent, you can use your chat box, what continent is Egypt located? And I see some of us, uh, some of our friends are saying, I said it with smiley faces. So go ahead, tell me what continent Egypt is located. Yay. All right, Elliot was first to the draw. Absolutely, it is Africa, okay? So in this top part of Africa that you see boxed in on that big continent, that's where Egypt lived thousands of years ago. And guess what? That's where it still is today. So if we wanted to, if we went up into the at like the space, right? And we wanted to take, or if we got into an airplane and we all wanted to meet. So you guys, right? You're all up here. And even though we are far away, this map makes me feel like I'm closer to you guys. So if we all came down here and met in Philadelphia when it was nice and safe or I came up, we could all get into an airplane in Philadelphia, fly over to Egypt, the top part of Africa, and it would take guys almost the entire day, 14 hours. And that's like, if you don't have a delay and all of that fun stuff. And we have one group of archeologists, Egyptologists that I love, all of the men and women, they actually take this trip once a year. So they go three months out of the year and nine months there in school learning like us. Now, the reason I brought up space, this is an image of Africa from like kind of what it would look like in the space and a quick image of the features. Now, as you guys just heard, maybe when you were first coming in, you can go and visit Egypt today and you'll find all about Egyptian culture. Now you get to learn about their belief systems. So I know 14 hours, guys, so long. Now, this here is an example of a mosque that you can see there. So this would be something that would be about connected to their belief systems today. You would be able to see them in school. So unlike, just like all of us, school might look a little different. And Miss Mally definitely knows a little bit about this wonderful fashion trend we see right here, because I know on her trip, she definitely picked up an amazing uh, piece of uh, fashion, just like that. And they also, guys, have cool restaurants just like we might have in our um, areas or around our areas. So if you want some Pizza Hut, they just are able today to see really, really cool, amazing structures that we get to learn about from history. Now, even though it's really exciting to learn all about ancient Egyptians and the culture that they have that they can share with us today, we're going to actually jump back in time. Now, ancient Egyptian civilization lasted for 3,270 years, okay? And we can figure out by looking at all of the things that we excavated that ancient Egyptians and all of us have a lot in common. Now, just like we do today, right? We have a daily life that demands certain things of us. We wake up every day. We have to be good to one another, good to our family and our friends, right? We also have responsibilities. Some of us have school, like what we're doing. Other people have work. Maybe the responsibilities are different, and we might even see new responsibilities. And I see some people talking about the situation we find ourselves. And it's cool that I see some people are talking about the pyramids because absolutely we get to learn more about their belief systems and their monumental structures, their government, their society. Okay, so we have lots of lots and lots of uh, lots of connections. 
I got a question, guys. Don't worry, you will see you will see the Sphinx. I like to call him Sphinxy. And I had a question on why a Sphinx's nose fell off. You'll see that we actually do have a little bit of a nose on the Sphinx that are, is at the Penn Museum. But the reason that happens is because of weathering and because sometimes you find objects in excavations that you really, really don't want to add anything to. So that's the answer to the question we got in the chat box about why the Sphinx's nose fell off. Okay. So we're jumping back into time and I want us to think a little bit about ancient Egyptians, our connections by thinking of all of our names. So can I hear from some of you in the chat box? What are different ways we use our names? Maybe how we use our, can I have some examples of how we use our names personally and how we might see other names be used of like celebrities or sports stars Okay, so saying hi to friends, absolutely. So you might introduce yourself. How else would you use your name? Where else would you uh, put your name? Ooh, okay, so it might connect you to your cousins. Okay. Ooh, a connection not just to your cousins, maybe it's even a connection to your family. That's some of the things that are coming out in the chat as well. So it looks like somebody has a connection to a jersey. Absolutely. So maybe you have your name. So what we could see a sports star have their name on their jersey. Some of you guys might even have your name on an object that connects to you. So like a necklace, maybe even a jersey that you created yourself. Ooh, introducing yourself to people you don't know. That is really, really great. All right, guys. These are really wonderful being ways to connect to your friends. Oh, I love this. We just got also a letter being able to sign your name to a letter. These are all such great responses. You guys so good. Okay. So ancient Egyptians, just like us, were interested in making sure that we could, they could use their names to introduce themselves as well. Now, we also see that they were interested, just like we were, in marking ownership of something. Now, you guys might, or even sending letters, you guys might write letters, you might even want to um, write your name on top of a test or on top of a piece of homework that you would have handed in to your teacher, right? We also see that people are interested in marking ownership. So if you guys draw a picture, I want to make sure that I know who that is. So you're going to make sure to sign that, right? Just like we might see some fa some uh, really famous individuals do that with their jerseys, like some of our chat box friends said, and also the idea of an artist, right? I like that you also have, I have a friend here that said that they have a nickname called Hazelnut because it relates to a tree. That's so wonderful. So you can even abbreviate your name, a pen name, if you will. This is an image right here. This is from my daughter's room. So she always likes to make sure what goes in her room, I know belongs to her. So she marks her door. And just like you guys said, it's this idea of a connection to family. We're able to understand more about our heritage. We're able to make these deeper connections that can make us look further back into time, okay? So that's different ways that why names are important. Now, what you see here is this idea of cartouche, okay? The cartouche is just a big word that means the name of a pharaoh. Now, I have a couple different examples of cartouche in front of you on the screen. So you can see two of them right here. You can see an amulet, which don't worry, we'll talk more about amulets next week. And then you also can see right here, another cartouche. So with all of you guys, remember a big thing about archeology span is using that eye. I want you guys in the chat box to tell me what are some of the things, the features that make up a cartouche? What are some of the elements you see in all of these cartouche? What are some examples? You can put it in the chat box. Okay, so I have lots of people saying images. I like that you're talking about the description. We have lines, we have hieroglyphs. Oh, I love that somebody called out shapes. Okay, is there anything else you notice? Oh, circles around the pictures. Okay, great, anything else? So we see those circles, we see those hieroglyphs, those images, the shapes. 
Oh, we see line shapes and circles. So somebody called out not just the circles, we see those lines too. Oh, and we do in some cases, it looks a little bit like letters. All right. You guys, I love, oh, and the design, right. So all of the elements that you guys just called out are definitely part of the design, okay? I am so impressed by all of you. I, you guys always make my heart so happy. So one of the big things that you guys called out was this idea that there is absolutely this design element. And don't worry, we'll get to those hieroglyphs and those images in a minute. But the one thing that makes a cartouche stand out is most definitely the idea of those circles, which kind of look more like ovals. They're kind of doubled in a lot of cases and the line that sits at the bottom. Now, this is a way of calling attention to an individual's name because these cartouches were connected to the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh actually got two different names, the name in which they were born with, what we all get, and then they get a name when they ascend the throne, when they become the rulers. So a way to make sure they are documented in time for all of history, we get to see those Pharaohs, those very special rulers, called out. Now, everyone has a name in ancient Egypt, ancient Egyptian, right, language, and it's written with those images, those hieroglyphs. But what makes the pharaohs very special is right here, these ovals and the line, okay? So good job, guys. That's why looking closely is the first step. Now, how do we know what this means? You guys did a great job. We're talking more about the hieroglyphs. Now, how do we know what hieroglyphs mean? And I'll be honest with you guys, for a really long time, people didn't necessarily know that hieroglyphs had specific meaning. Instead, what we find is this major discovery. Now, remember, I told you the Penn Museum's excavated for a really, really long time, and somebody in the chat box already called this out. So let's see if we have our other friends, because I don't know if you guys can all see your chat box, everybody in chat box. What do you think this object is right here? Since I think I, some of you guys might be familiar. Yes, okay, so I have a couple people saying that this looks like the, yes, all right, let's get two more and we'll see. It looks like the Rosetta Stone. You guys are so smart, I love it. And this is a big way we understand what these cartouches mean and also just what we know what hieroglyphs mean. Now, let me break this down for you. The Penn Museum doesn't just excavate alone. We always believe that archaeology equals team work. So we don't just work in teams within our museum. We also work with other museums because we want to make sure that other museums are able to excavate and more people are better than one, right? So we actually went with the British Museum. We excavated, helped excavate the Rosetta Stone. Now, what we see is three different layers of this Rosetta Stone. The very first top is all hieroglyphs. So it's those pictures you guys called out. Now, don't worry, we'll get to the paper at the end. Now, what we have as the second area right here is what's called Coptic language. So that's the first time people move away from writing in pictures and starting to form an alphabet, like what we might have today. And on the very end, we see the uh, transcription or translation in Greek, which is something that is still read today and practiced today, okay? So that's how we know what these hieroglyphs mean and that they actually had names. And we are also use this to decipher the other information that's recorded in images called hieroglyphs, okay? So here's some examples just to call out what you guys said, those images, and you can see here, cartouche don't just have to stay upright. They can really be any way if you want it to be horizontal, uh, horizontal or if you want it to be vertical. Now, what can we learn from these? If, this, if we have pharaohs, right, we first learn a lot about the, the symbols of a pharaoh. So by looking at this image right here with their cartouche, so this pharaoh's name in hieroglyph right here, can you look here in the chat box, tell me, what are some of the really quick symbols of a pharaoh that jump out at you? What are some things included on this statue that are symbols of a pharaoh to you? Oh, okay, great. So I have the chin, the beard, the hat, 
The rod and the staff. I the rod and the staff are definitely something that are fair, absolutely connected to the fairer rule. Um, and then the headwear. I love that you call it the headwear. Wonderful. So we have something. The headwear is called a Nemi's headdress. So absolutely, that's something that is a significant significant factor. We have that false beard. You guys are calling out, which is wonderful as well. We also see that, yes, unfortunately, there is damage, so he is missing his arms, but he's sitting in a, for, a for, look, frontal position, and he does have this false beard, or what was the false beard. Good job, guys. And I will say, a lot of what you're going to see today, guys, is broken. We don't add information. Instead, what we, what we want to do is just preserve what we do have. So that's why you'll see some things broken. And my friend just called out. Thank you for noticing that. It's also his chair. So we're not just seeing him. We're seeing this very fancy chair. Now, if we look closely, guys, because I want us to make our own hieroglyph in a moment, I want you to see how we can very, very quickly understand this. So once we were able to understand that these pictures actually had meaning, and we were able to start translating that meeting and we found out a cartouche is encircled with a line. We then are able to break down the meaning of that ruler. So this is a really, really quick experience for you guys to learn what, how they would say his name. We also see that this would be the King Ramses. So this is actually Ramses the second, and this would be the name that he received when he got his throne. Okay. So this is one example. Now we can learn a little bit more. So if anybody here has studied ancient Egypt, you might have heard of the one Pharaoh that tried to change everything. He changed the city. His wife's name was Nefertiti. He started putting her in all of the de in all of these different uh, depictions all over Egypt. And he changed the look of what the Pharaoh was wearing, both from hat to kind of like hat. Yes. Good job. We have some people putting their names. So right here, what we see up at the top are cartouche that actually identify him as the ruler, that's the person that believed in the sun god, and also his wife Nefertiti. This is a way for them to claim ownership of something they were really proud of. So they were really proud of trying to make ancient Egypt one god related to the sun. So that's one example of what we can learn from cartouche. We also here can see a lot of connection to their understanding of their belief system. So I'm gonna test your skill. Let's get a guess in the chat box. Can I hear from you? How many cartouche do you see on this slide? So we have three different objects. How many do you see? And you have to look kind of hard for one of them. All right, I'm getting lots of threes. Oh, I'm getting a five. Three, four, I have four, six, four. All right, I'm gonna wait one more, six. Let's see. You guys, really good obs. Oh, three, four, four, okay, 12. Henry, I wish there was 12. I'd be trying to read all the names to you and Elliot, 345, me too, right? I wish I could look at 345 cartouche. I feel like I did today. Now, here's the thing, it is actually the number four. So all of those that said four, good eyes. I love all of the other suggestions as well. So we have one, one, two. This is on a wooden schwapti, a worker. Someone would take with them to make sure they didn't have too much work in the afterlife. This is a canopic jar that would hold the organs removed during the mummification process. Right here, you can see that sneaky, sneaky cartouche. And then right here is our last cartouche making four. So good job, all of my friends. And if anybody wants to notice right here, that's like a little wasp. That's my favorite. Yes, so we have, um, I have a slide for everyone to make their hieroglyphs. Don't worry, Miss Katie. Now that's my favorite type of hieroglyph. Now, the next thing that we can learn is actually from the Sphinx. So the Sphinx here actually lives in the museum. He's one of the biggest one in all of the Western hemisphere. Um, I call him Sphinxy. He has lots of different cartouche. And guess what, guys? 
Not only do we get to see his name in writing, but we also get that connection to what we have, his family. Right here on his shoulder doesn't, not, doesn't just represent who this person was, Ramsey. It also connects him to his father, also named Ramsey, and the person that was, that was originally um, in charge, right? Kind of the lineage that they followed. Hello, Sphinxy. Trust me, guys. I hope if you guys, when we get there, I hope that you guys all um, will write a letter to him at the end of this. And the reason there's a question in the chat box about why is he called the Sphinx? That's a really, really great question. The reason that they're called the Sphinx is actually because the Sphinx represents a mythical being that kind of rep is across ancient worlds. And it's something borrowed and something that you can really see in ancient Greece and Rome. You can see a Sphinx also here in Egypt. They look a little different, but it's the same idea of, as a myth mythical creature. Good question. Very, very good question. So as you can see, guys, the I wish he was alive in the museum and we did actually move him just this past summer 300 steps and it was really cool. So when you guys are designing, maybe I can find that video for you. Now we are going to move on to designing and I want to make sure that you guys know the coolest part about high about these cartouches is that you're supposed to let your artistic freedom guide you. Just like you can see on Sphinxy, I love that you guys are calling him that. You can see here on Sphinx, he has multiple cartouches that are sitting upright, right? From top to bottom. Now, what you have also on the side of this to make with that design, that artistic nature, you can see that the cartouche is also flipped. So when you're designing your name, you can do this any way you like, okay? Now, the last thing I'm gonna say before we design is guess what, guys? We can use cartouche to find out new things even right now. So this image that you see right here, this is the image of a pharaoh named Seneb Kai. Now, Seneb Kai, if anyone's ever done the mummy makers, you might know this symbol. This is the Ka symbol, which means energy. This was a pharaoh, guys, that guess what? We never knew existed. It wasn't until five years ago did we ever know Seneb Kai ruled over Egypt. That's because when he ruled, he actually had, uh, he was, it was kind of like a time of war. So he didn't make it to the Valley of the Kings. But even though he didn't make it there, he had a group of people create a tomb in the city, ancient city of Obidos, which we recently discovered with his remains in it. You can see right here where my cursor is. This is the block that holds his cartouche. So we were able to identify this pharaoh by name because we saw those very important symbols and the collection of the hieroglyphs. And then guess what else, guys? We found out these were making a hive in there. So this little, uh, this little work right around here, they were actually having bees form a home in there. So our scientists, our conservators went there and they were able to help safely remove those bees. And they did a little bit of patchwork to make sure that that part of the wall, that tomb would stay safe. Now, while you guys are drawing and Miss Katie and Miss Mally, I'm gonna send along the blog and I can uh, to the ancient artifact lab that has uh, more information about this. So I can make sure you guys can enjoy it. I know we only have a short time together. Now, we don't have that much. And on that note, since we don't have that much time, Let's talk about how our cartouche are made so that you can make your own. We can see them small, like what Miss Mally had, right? We have an amulet that you can wear made with a mold. And we also see a lot of times, guys, when they're not carved in, they're painted by the scribes. So uh, it's now time for us to get our paper out, okay? I'm gonna come back to this slide so that you guys will have the alphabet up while we are decorating. But first, I'm just gonna show you how this will go. We're gonna get our materials and our pencil. We're gonna fold our paper in half. Then we're going to decide which way we want to hold our paper. So we might want to have a cartouche that goes from the top to the bottom. Or if you're feeling super creative, turn that paper on the side and do that, do your, we'll do your uh, hieroglyphs. And then, the next part we'll do is add what makes it royal, but I am going to wait for you guys 
to, I'm going to wait to have you guys make your images first. So first, Miss Mally and Miss Katie, can you let me know? You're able to see me and this, this slide, right? So I don't need to stop slide. I don't need to stop sharing my screen. Is that correct? I can see you, but you're small. So yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure if the kids, maybe the kids could let us know. Do you, let's get started and kids let us know if you need to see Allison bigger and we'll switch maybe. Yeah. Perfect. We can't do a split screen somehow. I know my, I didn't want to, last time that kicked me out. So I didn't want to use the other software. I wanted so to. So the kids her. can, if the kids go to the very top of their screen, they should be able to switch it to a different view, but maybe not. I'm not sure. No, I, they, I'm trying to do that. No, you can't. Okay. We'll figure it out. So how about we start like this? I'm going to, I will leave this up we'll come back to it you guys can see me down here and i will get a little bit bigger at one point so we'll jump back and forth but first let's all of us get our piece of paper out so how about i stop sharing screen here we will all look at each other here so i want you guys all to get your piece of paper out and i want you to tell me when you have that paper out i'm going to remove my daughter's uh rainbow she wanted to make sure you guys knew that we were all in this together Okay, so what we're going to do now, because I'm getting some yeses, is all of us hot dog style match up those ends of your sheet together and then make a crease. This will allow you by folding, try the best you can to match those corners. This will be a really easy way to give you a guide on uh, kind of like a sizing. Now I want you guys to remember when you have your sheet up, okay? I want you to think about what, giving yourself some space on each side. So think about it as one finger. You wanna have at least maybe an inch from the bottom, an inch from the top, and you wanna give yourself maybe two, a finger or two fingers on the sides, okay? So once you're done that, Go ahead and place it down and get your writing utensil. Is anybody, I will get you, I'm going to put the alphabet back up so that you guys can see. But if you want me to, I can try my best to eat. I'll draw my name. Or if you guys want me to, we can think of a fun name and we can, uh, you can test Miss Allison's knowledge and I will do my best to draw the fun name uh, we pick as a class. So what do you guys want to do? You want to get crazy and give me a name or you want me to try to draw my own name before I switch sides? Oh, all right. People are saying that they want to go. They want a crazy suggestion. So, you know, Miss Allison loves crazy. So what's a good name? What do you think? So we have seal, 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 seal. Super. I don't know if I could do super cow fragilis get that espialagosis, but I would try my best. That might be a little hard. All right, so I see lots of seals and I won't lie to you. I'm really attached to the seal lamp that some of the students I met that uh, earlier this year from the Connected North group, the Connected North group uh, showed me. So why don't we do seal? Okay, I do like seal, sea lions too, all right? Now, all of you guys, you're gonna write your name. So I'm gonna share my screen again to show you those ABCs. Now, remember, ancient Egyptians didn't have an alphabet the way we do. But instead, what we're going to try to do is, this is kind of an example version of how we can best write our names, okay? So, oh, I like also that you guys have cat, sea lion, salmon, and we're going with seal. All right, good. I'm, I like that. And I like Katniss as well. Very good. I'm a big hum Hunger Games person. So, the first thing we all need to do is if you have a really long name, for example, my name is Allison, and I sometimes, when I'm writing my hieroglyphs, that can be a little bit of a challenge. So I write my name as Allie. That's what my mom called me growing up. So my name is A-L-L-Y-S-O-N typically, but I use uh, Allie for my hieroglyphs. So that's A-L-L-Y, okay? Now you guys can pick your full name. You can pick your nickname. I know that there's a hazelnut in the room, right? 
So whatever you'd like to do, um, you can use your shorter name or your nickname or your long name, whatever you'd like. Now, while you guys first search these hieroglyphs, okay, for your letters, I always say the best thing to start is, oh, I like that we have a short name in some cases, right? The first thing I like to start with here is writing my letters. So I say seal. I have S. E-A-L. Now, while you guys are looking for your the letters of your name, if you guys have a minute, who can tell me what does the letter, uh, describe what the S is? Who can tell me what is S after you start writing your name? We can play along together a little bit. Oh, okay. Quick to, quick to the draw. We have a bolt. Okay, so I will put my little line. Two. This is just to make sure I have my reference. So what is next? Who can tell me what is the E? What's the E? Okay, cool, Hazel. Okay, so a double read is our E. And what about an A? Who can tell me? This is my favorite one. I'm not going to lie. It's my favorite. It's my favorite. All right, so we have eagle. I love the eagle, not just because my name starts with an A, but I love that you have eagle. We have the Eagles uh, football team here. So sometimes I tell everyone that that's the best American football team, in my opinion. Um, and then what about our L? Who can tell me where is our L? Yes. All right, we have an expert here, my lion. Okay, don't make fun of me at home, okay? That's my lot. This is my lion and I'm sticking to it. So what we have to do, what we have to do now is decide. Now that I have my guide here, what do I wanna do? What do you guys think? Should I make this vertical or should I make it horizontal? What do you think? Should we go up and down or across? Go ahead and drop that in the chat feature. up down all right charlie i appreciate it so first i'm going to write my s i'm going to do my double read and because this is the cartouche of a pharaoh i'm going to add a little extra i'm going to get fancy with it and add some extras to the reads i'm going to do my best for an eagle and remember guys, now you're gonna be selecting what you wanna do, right? You're gonna be going up and down or you're gonna go horizontal. And I'll try my best to make my lion a little bit better, okay? Make sure it goes this way. It kind of looks like sphinxy. All right. So, okay, and I, uh, right here, I'm glad someone also said vertical. Right here, this is going to be my vertical. So great. Now, who can tell me, what are we missing? What are we missing on our cartouche to make it stand out? How can we add, what elements do we need to add to make sure? Okay, I have one suggestion. Okay, anything else? So we have one suggestion in the chat box. Anybody else want to make a suggestion? Yes, okay. The oval all around it. Good job, you guys are so good. And there's one other feature that we have to think about. What's that one extra feature? Yes, good job, oval plus that line. So once you guys have gotten all of your um, all of your hieroglyphs down, I know that it takes different. It's a different pace for everybody, right? I want you guys to make sure to put that oval around it and the line. Okay. Now I'm gonna do that over here as well. Now, if you guys, here's the one trick: if you went from one side to the other. The way the place you put the line is going to be right here on the left. 
Okay, so on the left side is where you want to put that line if it's vertical. So up and down, you're always going to have that in the bottom. But when you're doing the vertical, it's always going to be on the left. And that should be really how the animals are facing. So my eagle should be facing the other way. Sorry about that. Now, here's my question for you guys. You all have this opportunity to create your, to make yourselves royalty. I'm hoping you can use this as your guide. Add on to this. You can even put stickers around it if you'd like to. You can use any color you want to. It's okay. My Look at my eagle. Don't worry. It looks more like a little love pigeon or a blue jay, which is can be a bully sometimes to the birds in my backyard. So I totally understand. You guys can spend time doing this. You had the link dropped by Miss Katie. So you can keep uh, looking at this, but I have another special treat for you. Guess what? At the Penn Museum, I will get this link in a moment. We, you can actually go onto our website and you can make your own uh, name in hieroglyphs. So you can check your work um, right online. There's a little interactive. So you guys can check on online if you'd like. Ms. Allison, I can show them where it is because I also have the cartouche um, okay. pattern and your website and all of that stuff that you sent to me. Perfect. Okay, good. When you're, when you're finished, I can show them that. Okay, great. Well, I'm kind of at the end of, oh, the one thing I was going to say is if you guys can, I really would love, because I know that we don't all, we all have, everyone around the world speaks different languages. If you wanted to, we would love if you sent a letter to Sphinxy. So write a little letter to Sphinxy. He is so lonely in that museum. We can make sure he gets it. Sign it as a royal pharaoh, because that's what you've just made yourself. And if you can, sign your name in whatever language it is that you speak and write. I love to see all of the different ways that people decide to, to sign their names and take ownership of their names. I think that would be a great idea. So why don't I show the students where they can find the information? Oh, it says share file or new whiteboard. Katie, what do I do? I need to be the host to or presenter. Can you yeah, give I'll me just that? move it over for you and then you can share. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get this. Um, I'm going to grab the link and I'll put it right into our chat box. Allison, can you just drag that little blue icon beside your name over to Mally? Because I think you have to do it. There's like a little blue dot beside the icon on your name and the in the participants. Click on participants. Yeah. The blue ball. little blue ball. The Cisco. Did you get it? I yeah. get it. Oh, okay. Okay. So boys and girls, what we can do is we can go to connectednorth.org at home. And this is the first time Miss Allison has seen this. If you want to send your pictures to us, again, you can go to the page and con you can put your name and your email and go to choose the file and send it, um, send your cartouche and your name, if you know your name in either Anuktitut or Cree or Anishinaabe or Ojibwe, that would be awesome, or any other language that you put your name in. Also, no resources, so click on that. And then we're going to, s oh, you're a child. Well, you know what, He's, you can maybe ask your mom and dad when they're finished work and that's okay. So we're gonna go to additional resources. And we're going to scroll down. This is an old picture we had, um, I think, of Miss Allison's friend and Mr. Penn. Yes. Oh, Mr. Penn, guys, he's in the museum too. I miss him. I used to mummify him every day. I know. <laughs> I know. And wear your leopard skin and click on that. And that's going to take you to two things. So you can go to the Penn Museum and find out where you can write, uh, you can write to Sphinxy. You can click on this and it will go to write your name in hieroglyphs. This is really cool. So you can type your name and write that in. And then you can also um, click on this and that's the cartouche activity that Miss Allison just shared with us right there. There it is. And you can download that if you want to do another one. So we've tried to make 
everything really easy for you guys. So here it's at Penn Museum. You can also visit the Penn Museum and see where Miss Allison works. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And I want to really thank Miss Allison because I love your sessions. Everybody does. Oh, and we can, I love being with you guys. Uh, we can see you again two times next week. We're going to see you for amulets and magic wands. So cool, right? Yes, I can't wait. And um, I think, do we have any time for questions or is that not something nope, that we have? Okay. Three minutes for questions. And Charlie and AJ said they loved your class. We oh, all thank class. you. And guys, you know what I'm doing right now? The reason I was looking off. First off, I love all of you guys so much for participating. You guys are the best. And I also just put a YouTube link into us moving the Sphinx. You might even see me. You I won't lie, guys. Miss Allison was hanging out of windows up on top of a up on top of a roof at one point. You can see anything. You might be able to see me in a couple of different ways, but Miss Valley, in thinking about it, we can maybe talk about how we can talk about how we move the Sphinx. That could be a really cool lesson to chat about. And a whole lesson on the Sphinx and all the theories about how his nose was shot off, maybe by Napoleon's people, but not really. <laughs> but anyway, there's a lot of fun things that like really cool Egypt facts. Yes. Do, Do you guys want to see some sand from King Tut's tomb? Yes. Oh my goodness. And also Seneb Kai, we can talk about King Tut and also how we look at King Tut's CAT scans to learn more about him. And then also how we did the same procedure with Seneb Kai, that Pharaoh I was talking about earlier with the bee the cartouche with the beehive. So this is some sand that came right from outside of King Tut, not in the tomb before we went in the tomb. My mom really loves King Tut. And so um I just this is some sand from outside on the in the desert in the Valley of the Kings. That is so cool. Yeah, and my name is written in Arabic. I was going to say that Ar the Arabic script is beautiful, and especially with it being the glass piece, is so nice. And it's so precious. I keep it with me because it's just so special. Yes. Yeah. So that's from King Tut's tomb when I was there. Guys, that's so cool. Yeah. Okay, guys, have a great, yeah, thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. And thanks, Miss Allison. Have a great weekend. Hope you're Wait, there was one, there was one really quick question I just wanted to make sure to get to before going. And it was all about why did they speak in images? That's a really good question. And the the reason that they spoke in images was this very similar to how we use our emojis today. Sometimes using images to create to express thoughts and ideas were the first step before there was an alphabet and not everybody spoke the same language. So great, great question. Really good question. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Allison. Have a great weekend. And maybe we'll see the boys and girls when we see the Moat Museum and, and the mysterious animals of the deep. Ooh, so fun. All right, guys, have fun. You're always welcome to come. Your daughter's always welcome to do this. Oh, oh, so exciting. Okay, I'm in. And thanks, guys, so much. And I'll see you on Monday, hopefully, when we talk amulets. Bye. See you guys. Thank you.